The Deep Sea Diversity Expedition has returned from conducting science to support the multiple nations co-creating and co-governing marine conservation areas off of the Pacific coast of Canada. We have a really cool trip up the west coast of Vancouver Island. We're going to do over this crossing and then we're going to arrive at Haida Gwaii for some of our first dives at deep sea environments. Our main goal for this expedition is to collect data on marine conservation in all the marine habitats of the deep sea. A priority of the mission was to widely communicate the science to a local and global audience. Events were jointly hosted by communities, partners, and the At Sea Science team, reaching the general public, scientists, and over 40 classrooms around the world. So, good day, everybody. My name is Skiljada, and I work for the Council of the Haida Nation. I'm the marine biologist and marine planner for Council of the Haida Nation and I'm really excited to be here exploring all these really sacred places. So, how oh, for having me. We explored new and long-term monitoring habitats off of Vancouver Island and Haida Gwaii. We're going to be looking at the amazing biodiversity supported by these underwater volcanoes. Our team was the first to lay eyes on SALP 5494 Seamount near Haida Gwaii, the closest to shore seamount and the only one in a newly proposed conservation area. Uh, we're not just scientists on board, there's a team of technicians and pilots and it's all to run this robot right here. So this is the Pelagic's ROV remotely operated vehicle and it's high density foam. This vehicle leaves the ship and is tethered to it. So there's a cable that feeds the robot power, relays information, and it's also how we get imagery and information uh, back from the vehicle. A typical dive will be to a single location in the deep sea, but we will have multiple objectives to get done during this dive. So after a descent that's maybe an hour in length, we'll get down to the bottom. First, we do mosaics, which is high resolution profiling of the seafloor and the environment, so we can make a 3D reconstruction of that environment. Uh, my name is Georgia Clyde, and I'm a physical scientist of Fisheries and Oceans Canada. And one of the main things that I'll be doing is taking images and we stitch them together to build uh, 3D models. We use these models to visualize large areas at the same time, and we'll also be using them to monitor some of these long-term uh, monitoring sites that we're hoping to revisit. After we do a few mosaics, we move on to specimen collections. Down here are sample jars, and they're connected to this what looks like a vacuum cleaner hose, and at the end here, it's connected to an arm, and see, so we can maneuver this around the sea floor and collect very delicate items off the sea floor and put them on the RV, and when the RV returns to the ship, the taxonomist scientists can look at those. Everybody, we got our labels with what we collected. Make sure it's in there, match it up with your specimen, and go out, and then we're gonna bring it back here and start the photography first. And then we're gonna get going on uh, IDs and taxonomic sampling with tissue samples. A diverse taxonomic collection of 100 specimens from a dozen phyla could possibly offer new species to science. I'm going to be running the taxonomy lab. Whenever we get a chance to sample some of the critters that we see, whether it's corals, sponges, sea stars, they'll all come back here to get processed, photographed, and then we'll sort them all and preserve them so that we can study them later. And the cool thing is every time we go this deep, it's so rare, it's so hard to get to, we're almost guaranteed to find something that's never been seen before, so we could be looking at new species on this trip. So I'm setting up for tissue sampling. We clean the equipment before between each use. This is for genetic research. This will go to the Hakai Institute. I'm just gonna pack and pick up this leg and then it goes in the vial and that's gonna be processed for um, DNA barcoding. We return to Skong Kingless Bowie Marine Protected Area to resurvey long-term monitoring sites and remarkably were able to visually detect some ecological changes over the last four years. Haida scientist Skil Jada led the dive to the ecologically and culturally significant peak of the Skong Kingless Bowie Seamount, known to have been a Haida island when sea levels were lower. 
And so on Kingfless is a really special place because of the biological diversity, but also because of the cultural significance. It's the site of a supernatural being. We have oral history of the seamount going back thousands of years. The dive to the summit was awe-inspiring. The shallow sunlit cliffs and peaks gave rise to towers of thousands of rockfish, visible in both the submersible camera and the scientific echo sounder. As we are seeing so many rockfish of so many different species and, and it is just bursting with life. We're all kind of freaking out about how special it is. The live streaming of the deep sea footage and chats had a worldwide reach and allowed us to interact and connect with viewers and gain real-time input from shore-based collaborators. I think it's a really great new tool that a lot more organizations are using all this outreach and being able to share everything we do do. Using the ship's echo sounder, we profiled and confirmed eight seamounts, four of which are newly discovered. Going out to the deep sea is a, is a rare occurrence. When we come out here, we try to accomplish as much as we can for as many partners as we can. The ship was equipped with a multi-beam echo sounder, which allowed us to gain high-resolution seafloor data, including that of Union Seamount, the second tallest seamount in Canada, which had been previously unmapped. From my understanding, DFO doesn't have a way to map the seafloor as of yet, and so this will be kind of like a pioneering situation for them. A broad group of determined collaborators came together to equip our vessel with a one-of-a-kind mounting system for the multi-beam to enable our ambitious project to map the deep. This is huge. This is the first time scientists are taking a pole-mounted, super magnetically stabilized multi-beam off a Canadian Coast Guard ship and mapping the sea floor um, offshore of Canada. Seabed 2030 is an uh, initiative by the United Nations to call countries to, to the cause of mapping the sea floor. A lot of ours isn't mapped and what we've done here today is prove that our science expedition has the capacity to do that. Yeah, it's exciting to learn a new acoustic technology. This is important for conservation because it's giving a lot of information from an area that doesn't get visited very often. Look at that overhang. That's the cliff. Charting stuff that hasn't really been charted before is definitely like the coolest thing you can do. Continuation of oceanographic sampling in the offshore area added important information on the chemical and biological properties of the water column in seldomly visited areas. I'm out on the survey as the oceanographic lead, so we're going to be seeing a lot of the bottom of the ocean on the survey, but the water surrounding the seamounts, around and above, has a huge impact on the community on the bottom. So this tool here is called a rosette. We've got a CTD on the bottom. That CTD electronically measures things like oxygen, nutrients, salinity, so how much salt is in the water, the temperature, so all of these different chemical properties impact the communities that we see on the bottom. I'm collecting water samples for eDNA analysis. I'm really excited to be on the west coast of Haida Gwaii. We're down near Gwaii Hanis, and I, yeah, I really feel at home. Okay, so we're just about to send the bongo net down to 250 meters. It has a 236 micrometer mesh on it. It's going to catch all the little critters that are living in the ocean. Povapods, krill, larval fish, fish eggs anything that can escape it. So right now I'm size fractioning all the zooplankton that we caught in the bongo net. So in this case I'm splitting them up into four different size groups um, to be able to categorize um, how big the zooplankton are and how diverse their sizes actually are. This is the underwater vision profiler. So it is a strobing camera that'll take pictures of anything that goes between the two red lights. So plankton, jellyfish, anything swimming in the water column that happens to pass between there will trigger the lights to fire and the camera to flash. We added to the global array of Argo floats that autonomously measure chemical and physical properties of the water column for five years after deployment. We're deploying one here because we want to look and see if there's any eddies around Bowie Seamount as well if there's a permanent Taylor column um, around the seamount. So we're hoping to capture that with this float. We explored the seafloor of future conservation areas for chemosynthetic ecosystems, home to endemic animals, including being the first to return to the West Valley hydrothermal vents 36 years after they were discovered. And we are at 3,000 meters, and this is amazing. This is the first for our program. We've never been down this deep, and so we're all really excited. 
This science was a United Nations Ocean Decade endorsed activity and will contribute to our global understanding of the deep through the Challenger 150 and Seabed 2030 initiatives.